Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, December 20th, 2019. And this is our weekly video. We'll take a look back and see how eBay did last week. It's a little quiet on there right now because we're heading into the holidays and a lot of sellers don't want stuff ending uh, between Christmas and New Year's because they're going to be away. Shipping is a hassle. And, you know, selling in December and shipping in December in general is a hassle if you're on eBay because of uh, all the packages and the postal system and so forth. But at any rate, yeah, there were some good results. One of the things I wanted to mention, and many of you may have seen it already, we did a video uh, today that we put up on a sale that's taking place over on Catawiki. And these are some things that uh, belong to a, uh, a seller over there who acquired them from a collection apparently in the UK. Some great things. He sells on eBay as well from time to time, and he sells on Catawiki as well. And uh, there's some great things in there. There's a nice Chinlong Markin period uh, stem cup. We're going to scroll through it. There's about 30 lots. And we did a video on just this sale because I think it's that interesting. It's a dandy little sale, something in there for everybody. And uh, we'll take a look and, uh, at a couple of the lots. Uh, if you want to see more, go over and look at the, uh, the video we did that's uh, on YouTube right now. All right, there's, there's the stem cup in a very nice blue, nice soft blue. And uh, this beautiful uh, uh, Tara figure, uh, 17th or 18th century, late Ming, early Qing. Uh, there's also a Ming incense burner on there and so forth. And this really nice Daosai enamel, it's Yongchen market period uh, uh, bowl. Uh, dragons on the inside and the outside. A similar bowl went through, uh, I think it was Sotheby's or Christie's uh, not long ago. And it only had dragons on, one, one, on, on the, uh, on the uh, inside and not on the outside, as I recall. This is a nice looking bowl. There's a, it's a bunch of good things. We'll, we'll have uh, links off the newsletter page to this sale so you can find it easily. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, please do. It's free. Just come over and sign up and you'll, you'll get these kinds of notifications. But at any rate, that's, that's it for that. And if you want to know more, take a look at the video we just finished on it. It'll be uploaded with this one. All right, now on to eBay. What happened over there last week? Pretty good week. Um, even though it's, uh, I said it was late in the season, not a lot of stuff's going up, um, you know, there were some good things up. And one of them was this. It was a, a very nice early uh, Ming incense burner, 15th century looking example. Uh, it had a repaired, uh, replaced foot on it, as I recall. But nice, nice looking, uh, what's that doing in there? Who is this? I don't, oh, it's, it's close-ups of the finial, excuse me. There's a very nice finial on the top, beautifully carved. There it is. And there's the hardwood lid on it. There's the inside of it. It's a beautiful planter and a lovely example. And it ended up doing pretty well despite having a replaced foot. Brought $1,150. All right, but it was a nice package with a good lid on it and a very nice stand. The stand and the lid looked like they were done later, but still very nice examples. And then this, this was that, uh, that planter. It was about a foot, about 10 inches tall, I guess. And the guy listed as Yong Chen uh, example. It wasn't, it was a 19th century one. I mentioned it last week, but it's a really pretty one and it's nicely done. And uh, in the end, it brought what it should have. It brought $947, very, very pretty pot. And uh, over to this, an 18th century Famille Rose export bowl, 11 inches in diameter. It was in good condition. Had that nice, nice clear yellow, that nice, nice lemony yellow that they used. I love the facial expressions. And then you have rams and other animals over here. And uh, how did it do in the end? It did pretty well. It brought $779. Was a Chinlung example, and it was a good piece of export. All right, and then on to this, the little Kangxi jar with cover, a nice one, a uh, good looking foot on it, and ended up selling for $1,760. All right, and this was in the same seller that had the, uh, the previous lot as well. He had some nice things up. That's, the seller's name is uh, Migulari, uh, who's over in the UK in London. All right, and then on to this, another little Kangxi pot, high-footed. Good example. It's a well-known type. They made lots of these. Some of them are, are, have molded bodies, and some of them are just uh, turned like this one was. But it has a very nice level of cobalt in it, very sapphire -y. This very deep, rich blue is one of the nicest colors you want to see on Kung Shi porcelains. It's what they were known for. Here's a picture of the underside. Uh, it had a little nick out of the foot, out of the edge of the, uh, of the, edge of the foot. Um, and it had a small, small, small hairline right here. 
Uh, this seller was very meticulous about uh, pointing out flaws. And it ended up selling for four hundred and three dollars, which I think is a pretty good, pretty fair price. I, it's not too high, it's not too low. It's a you know, uh, you, nobody went crazy on it, and they and somebody got a nice piece of porcelain. And then on to this, this little Kangxi cup and saucer. It is a very attractive, very subtle, uh, elegant thing. It did have a few nicks around the rim of the cup, as you can see here, here, and there. All right, it was probably used quite a bit. And uh, here's a nice shot of it, and you can see the fritz on the rim. But the decoration is very nice. It reminds me of the decoration, how they did month cups. Very lightly drawn. Uh, of course, it doesn't have the script on it that a month cup has, but sort of in that same flavor. So if you can't afford a $100,000 month cup, you could, you could certainly afford this. It went for $293. Nice thing. And then on to this, the big vase. This was that 24-inch uh, Famille Rose mid-19th century vase. Very strong ground color on this. The, d the deep cobalt enamel, this is, that's overglaze enamels, um, are, are all over this. There's no underglaze blue on this that I could see. It's all overglaze, including the cobalt. Beautiful decorations all the way around, well proportioned. The proportions of this were quite good. Here's a good detail shot. You can see the, the brushwork was very good on it. Lots of nice shading in the enamels, especially the blues and the reds and so forth. And I love the way they did the poles. They look like wood, the way they, the way they painted it. A lot of painting went into that, painting the poles on this thing and um, so forth. Here's a, here's a close up of it. And uh, it's a nice vase. And in the end, it did pretty well. It brought $1,850, which I think is perfectly reasonable for that. It was a very nice big vase. And if somebody had asked me before, I said it'll bring fifteen to 2400 somewhere in there. Nice looking vase. And then over to this, the Canton jar. Uh, the seller, I think, innocently listed this as a Yong Chen type. It's not. It's a, it's a Chin Lung example. Um, uh, and this pattern, as many of you know, was very popular in export pieces. They exported lots of tea jars with this pattern. However, the decoration on this one is quite superb. Really well decorated. By the, by the 19th century when they were doing these, they, the colors were all sort of blurry. There wasn't a lot of definition. And uh, this one had nice, nice drawing on it. It was much better than the typical one. Here's the fisherman out by his boat. Lots of detail. Good looking example. All right. I like that. Nice mouth. And it had a crack in the bottom, too, on top of it. Okay. But a nice old example. And uh, it ended up selling for $345 with that crack in it. All right, just because it was so well done, I think. Just really well done. If that jar had been perfect, it probably would have, you know, brought triple that. All right, and then over to this. This jar was a nice one. It was also 24 inches tall. It's one of these Celadon ground Famille Rose things with some relief, um, uh, you know, some molded relief work on it of the elements, of the ribbons, and so forth. It did have some old repairs up around the mouth, but very attractive. These are always are nice with, um, with the Celadon grounds. Um, the detail shots of it were quite nice. Uh, there was considerable amounts of gilding still on it. It was uh, apparently uh, not, not abusively clean during its life. Here's a good shot of it, okay? And uh, here's the bottom. It had a line in it and all that. Well, despite all of that, it brought $807, all right? But I think it's a nice thing, and it will present well. It's a very handsome thing. And this is big, two feet tall. All right, and then over here to another vase. There was sort of the week of big vases, I guess. Is this a sort of a later 19th century uh, uh, Famille Rose vase with those big reticulated rock, rocky uh, uh, handles and um, some nice decoration on it, all that, very clear, okay? And it's a later example, and it still brought $1,057, all right? But it was in very good condition, and that helps a lot. And then on to this, the Kangxi jar with the uh, wooden, later wooden lids and so forth. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. Here's a picture of the mouth. It was a very pretty jar. I loved how it swells out in the shoulders and then goes to a nice, firm, stout neck going up. And it has these uh, upside-down leaves like you see on transitional pieces. I don't think this was transitional. Some people did. I don't. I think it's just Kung Shi um, with elements of transitional decoration. But in regardless, it brought $5,995. All right. He had it listed as transitional. I'm not so sure um, with that flat bottom. But at any rate, that's what he thought it was. 
All right, now, on to, oh, this was the uh, export, the 18th century export diaper rimmed uh, uh, basin that would have gone into a stand. So on this piece, only the interior is decorated because the exterior would not likely be seen. So it looks like that. And you can see how they gave it this big, thick rim so it would fit over um, and onto a stand. Here's a picture of the bottom. But this was a lovely piece of export. This really was. The decoration was in good shape. Notice the gilding on it was all still there. Okay, which is almost a miracle because these things got cleaned. They were used a lot in the 1800s when they, in the 18th century when they were brought over. Uh, this was made probably around 1780 or so, and it ended up bringing a thousand and two dollars. Not bad, but it was a nice piece, beautifully done. And then on to this, the pine tree with the uh, with the deer under it. This is a nice plate, uh, probably for the Vietnamese market, and uh, it ended up selling for four hundred and seventy-five dollars. And now over to this, the fan. Uh, this is a China trade fan, probably from the mid-19th century or a little later. It still had its original box, had a nicely, nicely carved blades. The, uh, the uh, end blades were particularly well done, nice decoration on them. And uh, it ended up selling, I think, pretty reasonably, $664 with its original box. Okay, nice looking, nice fan though, good looking. And this was sort of one of the little bargains of the week, I think. It was this seller over uh, in the UK that had some bronzes up, and he had this as a, either an 18th or a 19th century bronze uh, paper weight or some, scroll weight or something, table weight. And uh, I liked it a lot. I thought this was just a nifty little little example. And uh, he had it listed as 19th century, which may be a little bit conservative. I think it was maybe a little older than, than the 19th century, judging by that. It just looks older to me. But in any event, it went reasonably $256. I thought that was a terrific buy. And, uh, but then you had this one, okay, of the, uh, um, of the cat, okay, the foo cat, whatever it is, foo lion. And uh, let's see here. It was, do, 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 do. Nice surface on it, good patina all the way around. Uh, here it is on its little stand. I know it's not the original stand, but it looks good with it. And um, let's see, what it, he had this as 19th century Ching as well. I don't think so. I think this was older than that. And it went for $612. And uh, let's see what he, what he had to say about this otherwise. Uh, Foo Dog Lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, $612. Bucks. Uh, that was a, it's still a good buy. These are nice. Uh, this particular seller uh, gets good things and they don't mess around. They also had some nice uh, Netskis up last week and they did pretty well too. And then onto this, the teapot with the replaced silver hallmarked lid. I thought this was a neat thing. <clears throat> it, was, it was a common practice in England in the, in the 19th century, especially. Uh, when, when a teapot or something got broken, they'd take it down to a silversmith and they'd, they'd, they'd fix it up. They, or sometimes the handle would get knocked off. They'd put a, a, a new wooden handle on it or a piece of silver. They'd give it a silver spout. This one they gave a silver lid to with an ivory uh, uh, insulator knob on top. All right, this is really, it's just sort of an interesting bit. It's got a little bit from uh, China, and it's got a bit from England, and it's got some history, some charm. And um, it ended up selling pretty reasonably, $273. And I wanted to point out that the pattern on here is quite unusual. This is a very interesting pattern. It's not something you typically see. It incorporates the way figures were done then, but then it's a little bit different with the, with the way the building is added and so forth. And... Um, Here's the back side of it again. Uh, there we go. It repeats going around, but I loved, I loved the package. And uh, $273, there you go. Reasonable. This was a seller over in Brighton in the UK, Alfred Ceramics. All right, and I don't know what that's in there for. Okay, here we go. The rose water bottle, 18th century uh, cobalt blue rose water bottle. It's, it's like the stuff they made for the Indian market, the Anglo-Indian market. And uh, here's the foot rim on it. Uh, looks to be a Kang Shi example, but nicely done. And uh, it ended up selling for $463, which is a perfectly reasonable price for that. The toning of the blue was nice, too. It was sort of subtle, very soft. And then on to the rondel. This was a nice uh, uh, gilded uh, uh, gilt threads on silk uh, uh, dragon rondel. Uh, we've had these before. This was a rather old one. And as you can see, it's stained down at the bottom, some staining up through here. I don't know if that'll clean out. It depends on what caused it, whether it's, it's rust or grease or whatever it is. But uh, this is a, a nice old one. And uh, because of its age, it did pretty well. It brought $1,325, uh, 
with the with the with the bits of stains on it because I think it's a nice old example, probably late 18th century. All right, and then on to this. This is a nifty buy for the week. This is a Chinese export teapot. It's sort of a stock pattern that they used around uh, 1790 to about 1820 or so. You find these periodically. They also did plates in this pattern. But the form of the pot was quite well done. It was a nicely done thing with the recessed cover, and I like the shape of it. And uh, look at this, $171. That was a good buy. All right, That was a nifty buy for someone. And then moseying along over here, this was another good buy. This was that Chinese Amari with cobalt decoration on it. I think Kang Shi uh, uh, O2, whatever his name is, O2119 or whatever his username is. He was the seller of this. I have to, we'll know in a second. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that's who it was. And uh, this is a nice piece of Chinese Amari. Beautiful plate, about eight inches in diameter. And it went for $84. Yeah, Kang Shi O219 had this. Yeah. Um, and it had it was in very good condition. It had a couple of minor, minor frits to the rim. And it looked very Japanese. That may have scared off some people that weren't sure that it was Chinese. It was Chinese. And, uh, but it was very much in the Japanese taste, or the Japanese plates of the period were very much in the Chinese taste, I should say. But at any rate, Kung Shi, nice looking plate. And it went reasonably. And then over here, the uh, interest in, 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 in among, among collectors for hat stands seems to be boundless. Um, they, it's funny, hat stands used to be around everywhere and you could pick them up. You could pick up the most beautiful, amazing hat stand in the world you've ever seen for a hundred bucks not that long ago. And today, they, they just love them. They've grown to appreciate them. We used to find them all the time in houses in New England. They were very typical. A lot of them were made into table lamps. But this was a nice-looking pair. And in the end, they did just fine. They brought $3,618. All right. Now, on to this. The planter, the nice little uh, six-sided uh, famille rose planter. This was a nice one. Here's a picture of the bottom. Good paste on it. Oh, there's a from the Hong Kong Kowloon uh, East Antiques and Curios Association. Sold this, uh, the guy bought this in 1978, certificate of identity. I don't know, is there a price on here what he paid for it? 35 coronas, whatever that was. Okay, I don't know what it was back then. But regardless, this time around it was worth $1,100. And uh, it's 26 uh, centimeters in diameter, so it's uh, about eight at nine inches wide at the top, so it'd be perfect for a plant. So if you bought it and you watch my videos, buy a nice plant for that and have it on your table for Christmas. Okay, and then on to this. This closes in a couple of days. This is that uh, very interesting export terrine for the European market. It's up to $910. It's got two days to go. I just love this thing. It's a nice thing. And um, it's out of order. I haven't finished the sold items yet, but as soon as I came to it, um, uh, that'll be in the newsletter again this week. And then this. This was that silk ball plate that was sold. And uh, it ended up going for $775, which didn't surprise me at all because it was a very unusual pattern. And just so you know, for whatever reason, apparently the person who bought it, um, according to the seller, um, uh, it sounds like because it wasn't, it was Femile Rose, obviously, they described it as Femi Vare. This is a, the seller is an outfit in the UK who, who uh, raises money for hospice. Uh, this is a charitable group. And uh, if you want to do something nice at Christmas, come over. We'll have it back on the newsletter this week. Buy this plate. It's a nice plate. It went for $775. And apparently, whoever the buyer was said, well, it's not Femi Vare so, um, or, or something. So I, I'm not going to buy it. I, there was some sort of stupid argument about it. But it's a heck of a good plate. And, and uh, if you're looking for something nice, it's sort of Christmassy looking, too. If you want something nice to buy at the end of the year, maybe buy that plate. It's a good looking plate. And uh, on to this. This is uh, up and closes uh, in a couple of days. Um, this is uh, the, the ceramics and collectibles, Shangri-La. They're also getting to be big sellers over on um, uh, Katawiki. They actually have a sale under their name, Shangri-La, on Katawiki right now. And we'll try to get that into the newsletter. But this nice set of uh, bowls, beautiful, beautiful little set, uh, sort of late Ming. Uh, they're up to $115, and they have a... Uh, a couple of days to go. They close on Sunday. And then there's this piece of ivory. Um, you're not supposed to have ivory on eBay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This guy's in the U.S. This is a heck of a nice piece of ivory. Um, this guy sells oddball stuff. He sells real stuff and he sells some stuff I'm not so sure about. But uh, this is a nice looking carving, uh, beautifully done, very three dimensional. 
and it closes in one hour and 17 minutes, and it's up to almost $4,200, up to $4,180. I would have, I was hoping it would have been done by today because I wanted to have a total on it, but we'll see. Maybe I'll mention it next week. But anyway, that was a nice thing. And other stuff that's up over on Catawiki this week is this. There's a very nice Kung Shi bowl, and this closes um, uh, tomorrow on Saturday. But beautiful color, um, nice looking example all the way around. And uh, we'll see, but lot, very deep cobalt on that. And then over here for this, you have this uh, very nice uh, Kung Shi plate with these uh, lotus panels radiating out from the center. Beautiful example. And that's up to $94 and it closes tomorrow. And then over here on uh, eBay, let's see what we got on eBay. This, this big Famille Rose platter, this is a meat platter, and it would have originally had a liner, a reticulated liner that would have fit right into this slot running around the outside. It's missing that. And even though that's missing from it, it's already up to $750, and it closes tomorrow. That'll be in the newsletter. It's very well done. And here's that relisted. Oh, it's, up to, it's already back up to $265. This closes on Sunday. This is the silk ball plate that's being re-offered. Uh, I suspect it was mostly for non-payment, uh, but uh, just a, a great dish, all right? And if you want to do something nice for a hospice organization, uh, chase this plate. I mean, you're, you're buying yourself something nice, and you're helping out people who are at the end of their lives. There's no harm in doing that. Okay, and we've seen that. And this is the last thing. I just came across this this morning. This is a very curious plate. Um, very interesting dish. The foot room, to me, looks like a later 19th century one, obviously. This looks like it probably was made for the uh, either the Persian or the Indian market. It's quite an attractive thing, and it's big. This is a charger. It's just a, it's 15 and, uh, 14 and a half, 14 and three quarter inches in diameter, and I think it would look spectacular on a wall. Just a very interesting looking thing. For some reason, they wanted to show the scale of it by putting this little uh, 18th century bowl in the middle. I don't know why. It was a little confusing visually, but. That's what it was. All right. And it's up to $85. It's got five days to go. I suspect it'll bring $800 to $1,000, uh, but we'll see. But very unusual pattern and uh, obviously meant for one of the uh, export markets at the time, either India or the Middle East, I suspect. Okay. That's it for the week. Have a great weekend. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here, uh, please do. You just click the little button down below. <clears throat> if you haven't joined us over on uh, Bitamount and, st and you don't get the weekly newsletter notifications, uh, sign up for it over there. We're always adding stuff, and we've got a lot of changes right now going on at the site. And uh, get your Christmas shopping done, and uh, have a wonderful weekend. It's about 12 degrees here right now. It's gotten very cold with 40-mile-an-hour winds this morning. It was a little wild, but we're fine. All righty. See you all next week, and check out the other video we did for the Catawiki sale. All righty. Bye-bye.